Hey guys, so today we are going to answer a subscriber question and the question in question was, Frederick, what's the difference between server-side rendering, pre-rendering and static content generation? So let's get into it. So this is a good question because it might be a bit confusing. So quite a lot of people these days believe that the term server-side rendering is something that comes from SBA frameworks. Like you have all these JavaScript frameworks that you, you send an HTML file of some sort and then you bootstrap the SBA framework and that's kind of the whole story. And then you have this new cool concept called saying that, oh right, but maybe if we render out the DOM tree that our SBA framework is actually going to show to the user before we send it to the server, then we can get away from that split second there where the, or the, that moment where the page is loading for the user so that they can actually see content fairly quickly. That is what we call server-side rendering or rather that's what a lot of new developers think server-side rendering is. But the actuality of server-side rendering is that it's been all around for quite some time. The concept is still the same, that you basically, on the server, before you send the HTML document, render out what the document is actually going to look like. And most of the time you do this in like traditional web pages. You can look at quite a lot of, say, WordPress sites or PHP is very famous for being very good at this. And this is how most of the web actually works. You have some need for dynamic content, like say that you go to a product page or something with different products. Now the page looks the same way. It's the same HTML template, but you of course have different product information. So instead of like having one single HTML file for every single one of those products that you're selling, you're simply going to render out how the page should look and send it before you actually have uh, some publicity. Uh, well, rendering, out, rendering it on the server and then sending it to the client. Now, the reason why we do this is because, as, as I said, like, that makes, like, it reduces quite a lot of duplication. The downside of doing this is that we do more work on the server. It requires more computation, of course, uh, to, as you can imagine, to read a HTML template into memory plug in basically the stuff that, depending on the, your logic, that's going to be on the page and then sending the page as opposed to just sending a static file. So a static content generator as an example, or sorry, a pre-rendering uh, as an example, can be a very useful thing that uh, can kind of mitigate this. Let's say for the sake of argument that you don't have a well, you don't have a web page that needs to be all that dynamic. I mean, pre-rendering is, uh, as you can probably imagine, just the idea that you render out content before time. Like, in other words, you don't render on every request as you do with server-side rendering. You pre-render out things that are going to stay fairly static. An example of this is like uh, you can really think about it as pre-rendering and just sending a static HTML file to be very a very similar sort of thing. But the times that you do pre-rendering is when your content needs to change at least a little bit where and you don't want to go through the hassle of just creating a new file every time you have some type of new, new information. A good example of pre-rendering is if you have, say, you, there's quite a few of these systems where you might have some sort of blog, for example, where you have like Gatsby will be one of the example, an example of how you could do, do something like this where you might have a some type of data source, like a markdown file or you, some type of UI where you input some information about you know, your day or whatever for a blog. And instead, because you now already have kind of this information in place and you know a blog post will never, like, never change, quote unquote, it will always be the same thing, right? Then it makes a bit of sense to actually pre-render that. Like you don't want to have to write your blog information directly into some type of HTML, right? You don't want to like some consume like you as a as, as the blogger to sit there and just type it right in. So you have some other format like a Markdown file or a UI where you put your blog information, then you just save it, and then you can actually pre-render. In other words, you simply take that information, render it once and create a file from that. And then from then on, you send that static file. So you render once and then you send the file. Server-side rendering, so render on every request. Hopefully that distinction makes sense to you. And then finally, you have content generators or static content generators, which is in many ways very similar to having some type of pre-rendering, but a static content generator goes even further. 
it doesn't necessarily just render out the information into some type of HTML template. It pretty much generates, it can generate an entire site, if you will. You can basically create an entire website, uh, of course, a pre-made website of some sort with a static content generator. Uh, some of them are as, as simple as that you configure how you want the site to look and then you input your information of some sort in a very similar way as you do with pre-rendering with some type of data source or something like that and then you run a command or use the tool and somehow and then it spits out pretty much an entire uh, an entire static website and sometimes it doesn't even have to be static but most of the time it's going to be a static website so well yeah hopefully that this makes sense to you so what i want you to take away from this is that server-side rendering you can think of it as you have a HTML template of some sort and you want to have some dynamic information that needs to change pretty much fairly frequently. It's perfect for like a product page or like a web shop or something like that where the page looks the same, it's just that the information changes quite often. So you render on every request to the server. Pre-rendering, very similar, but in that case things don't change all that much, like a blog or something. So you render things out once and then you save this, that static content so you can send the same, same blog post, if you will, over and over so you don't have to render on every request. Finally, you have static content generation where you can basically produce, you can spit out from just some type of information with a tool or something like that, an entire website it can pretty much create, like it creates the CSS, the HTML, like all the markup from scratch. You don't have to do much work apart from that. Hopefully these distinctions make sense to you. Have a great day.